Sheikh Iksan Talib joins us in studio. Always a pleasure and a privilege. Assalamu alaikum and welcome, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Khadija and to our listeners of the Radio 786, it's really a pleasure and honor once again to be here. A big topic, uh, uh, um, uh, Sheikh. Yes, of course, it's the month of Rabi al Awal. We celebrate uh, the, 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 the most beloved um, of Allah's creations, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam. But of course, so imperative for us to keep um, emulating and to keep learning. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, this is the holy month of Ramadan and uh, Khadija. And yes, we uh, are of, uh, you know, always uh, the, the custom to reflect on the seer of our beloved Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But uh, this is again, I think, of uh, the, the lessons that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in this very difficult time, as you've um, sketched in your introduction, with a genocide that is still taking place, uh, reminding us in a far more sharp and a, a very direct way that we can't, um, engage or um, you know embark on um, uh, 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 just luxuries of speaking about the life of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam without critically interrogating ourselves in terms of its absolute eternal relevance to the context and to the uh, needs of human society in every era and in every time that we live, right? And so um, we can't simply sit here and, and, and talk about his life mm. without reflecting on how he would have responded in this time, in this space where we are, uh, because the Prophet Sallallahu life was about transformation, was mm. about bringing um, the eternal values of Islam to bear on society. And those values, uh, by the testimony of the Holy Quran itself, are the values of justice, are the values of compassion, are the values of um, equality, are the values of uh, peace and 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 uh, humanity and dignity. So these values, of course, form the basis of our faith. They form the basis of the life of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And they form the basis of that transformed society, which Islam, um, by its own claim, um, uh, uh, endeavors and 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 uh, seeks to establish. And so, um, again, if it's Rabiul Awal, um, our, one of our scholars, uh, Khadija, it's it's critical for us to f- reflect on this. Have really reminded us, um, and and he has been joined by many there after who have followed him. And, and uh, reminding us that this genocide uh, has, has now necessitated that Muslims understand that it is actually a fardu'in. It is a individual obligation for each and every one of us to work towards, in whichever capacity we can, uh, the alleviation of those hardships, the alleviation of the, um, the brutality and the, the, the murder, the mayhem, um, the massacres and in that genocide, it's it's a fardu'ain. And so if it is a fardu'ain, it means that whatever there is in our lives that we occupy ourselves with, that is maybe of the sunan, something of the things that is nice to do, they should now give way for the fardu'ain. Yeah. They must give way for the fardu'ain. And yes, it is a situation where, of course, we tire and we become fatigued and we feel um, overwhelmed and we feel sometimes hopeless and, and, and get despaired. Uh, but the reality is, is that we need to uh, navigate through those spaces. And, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is about showing, for, showing us. But we've got to delve into it. And therefore, this conversation, Khadija, and I'm happy to be here with you because you always make the conversation easier for us to be able to, um, you know, just um, uh, keep keep on track and, 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 and try to actually s- um, delve into the relevances of, of uh, what our sources have to offer. So it's the Quran itself in the Sunnah of our beloved Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is, of course, embodied in the Seerah. And so how do we then take these foundational values and bring them to bear? And so the values of justice, the values of compassion, does it mean that we just speak about these things, but we have no obligation to ensure that peace and justice, equality and freedom and, 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 and dignity 
um, is secured for all human beings? Is it fine just to be talking about, you know, how the Prophet used to do these things? No, it's not. And that, that is our challenge, again, as, as, as we always say. And so, more than just being a chronicle of the seer of the Prophet Sallallahu of his, um, you know, early life and uh, going then from there to the stages of Medina, um, the reality is, is that he went to Medina and established a just society. And that just society was grounded on compassion, grounded in justice and fairness and inclusivity. And this is all that, of course, we uh, see the complete polar opposite of, um, generally speaking, in the systems uh, that govern the world today and egregiously and been laid bare uh, on that uh, geographical space in, in Palestine, in the Gaza especially. And so how do we how do we then take the seerah of our beloved Salah, not merely as an historical account, but also to serve as a framework for us? How do we confront the injustices, the oppression? And then to advocate, of course, to advocate for the marginalized and to build inclusive communities. Mm. And that cannot happen, as Khadija, and this is what we as Muslims we don't get. That cannot happen that I am advocating for that which I must uh, in the Gaza, but I am not reflecting on that obligation that I have of how it applies also here in on the Cape Flat. Yeah. And so on the Cape Flats, we have our struggles. The, 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 the proliferation of gangsterism uh, is not doing uh, us any favors in terms of us being deemed the murder capital of the world. And so, I haven't checked lately, but of the last times that we've checked in terms of the murder stats in our country is at 83 murders a day. So all of these things is what should be um, contextualized and we should be looking at them in an interconnected way. Yes. We should be looking at them in an interrelated way because justice isn't divisible. Justice is comprehensive, coherent, and if we are advocates for justice, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi amply um, embodies for us, then um, it must be something that we then live and something that we see wherever um, we are. Uh, and not just when it happens sometimes, only sometimes we become um, alerted to it or more uh, attuned or sensitized to it when it happens to our own. But... Uh, the Cape Flats is us. <laughs> we are the Cape Flats. And so the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Sunnah should then also serve as, uh, uh, as, as a framework that for us that emphasizes these core values of human dignity and Khadija, of equality and the rights of the oppressed. And these, these principles, of course, resonate with, with modern struggles against systemic injustices, right? Where the, whether the fight is against racial um, discrimination, economic inequality, political oppression, all of these things are what the Prophet ﷺ had come to highlight how justice, compassion and mercy and dignity and equality and all of those things uh, become the frameworks and the, 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 the foundations upon which society must be based. And that is that is that is message, and so again, from a from a contextual perspective, uh, the global setting, the injustices there, the genocide, of course, in Palestine, uh, to the to also the systemic racism here still in South Africa, all of the inequality, all of the capitalist inequalities, all the 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 the, the poverty, which is by design, and at the core and the root of it, let's be frank and honest, is racism, mm. right. And so the, 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 the Muslim Ummah are, are required to be the ones who are at the vanguard of these issues, of these social justice issues, because that's what our faith is. Yeah. Uh, just you, you, your faith refuses that you be an adherent or a follower without those being your foundational values and your foundational principles. And that's where the... Uh, the seer of the Prophet Sallallahu provides a, a powerful a powerful blueprint for, and I, th I think those those are some of I think the important things to to open up with. But uh, to to start with, then to say 
if we have to hone in on the concept of justice and compassion, because this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says as his hallmark uh, trait, which Allah highlights. Uh, he has not been sent. Allah says, "Illa rahmatan lil as except as a as Allah's gifted mercy, as Allah's gifted compassion to all of the worlds. Is is, and so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's own preeminent character traits is of justice, and of mercy." And compassion are those, uh, you know, four, four grounded character traits. And so the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam throughout his life embodied these principles in his actions, in his decisions, in the governance which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's, uh, uh, you know, models provided and how to balance fairness uh, w- and, and justice with mercy. And, and, and this is both at the personal level and at the societal level. And so we, we remember when the Prophet Sallallahu in the early days of persecution, he had, to, uh, he had to, to, to fend for his followers because they were the nascent communities and the nascent community and, and invariably they were comprised of those people who were looked down upon in society. Right? So yes, there was a mix among them, but uh, those that the Quraysh in that society looked upon, looked down upon, were from among the prominent ones who followed the Prophet ﷺ. And there were, yes, those of the eminent ones in the society. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, for example, was the first person to, to embrace. But there were the likes of Bilal ibn Abi Rabah. And uh, these were looked down upon. These were looked as the scum of the earth by that society, that system. Uh, in Quraysh, that social, structural, hierarchical, sort of stratified system, uh, societal system. Um, also, the first um, uh, 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 female martyr, she, she, she was the first martyr in Islam, uh, Sumaya bin Khayyat. And so the Prophet uh, 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 role at that time, because of the weakness and because of the fact that there were there wasn't uh, political strength and power at the time was to support them to 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 continuously be a moral support for them to 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 call upon their faith even to remember that all of these struggles are necessary for us to be able to achieve uh, the ultimate goals that we and so sabr is important but he also called upon their their faith and the deep-seated faith and told them like the family of yasir who were actually martyred at that time uh, yasir and his wife um sumaya uh, uh, to say uh, our appointment is at my pond on the day of Qiyamah. And so in that way, the Prophet ﷺ would mix uh, all these um, resources and all these ingredients that allows for, for a human being to be able to find strength in different forms and in different uh, ways uh, is how the Prophet ﷺ's, um, you know, initial way of, 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 of counseling, of, of also providing uh, senses of, of comfort and support to those who are in, 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 in positions of, of, of difficulty and struggle. And then also... So the Prophet Sallallahu of course, undertook all of those uh, uh, um, principles and, 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 and messages in the early period to establish fairness and justice in society as well. Because um, when Sayyidina Abu Bakr, uh, when Sayyidina uh, uh, Bilal bin Abi Rabah uh, was made to be the target of the, um, you know, the, the responses by the Quraysh, uh, they told the Prophet Sallallahu that, look, um, we don't really mind that much, you know, that you brought this message. We worship these idols in any case, as Allah says in the Quran, so that we can gain closeness to Allah. This is what they claimed. But don't expect for us to stand sh- shoulder to shoulder with, with these people, these slaves. Don't expect of us to stand and regard them as our brothers. So it was the actual sort of racism that they had, which was at the core. And the Prophet ﷺ, of course, made these people brothers in Islam. They were all one. The Nabi ﷺ, remember how he spoke about, uh, oh, people, you are all uh, from one. Your Lord is one and your father is one. And there is no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab. And there's no superiority of a white person over a black person. And the only distinction and criteria is about consciousness of Allah. Mm. And so all of this could not be somehow, um, palat- it wasn't palatable, couldn't be digested. 
uh, to such a society. And as well as justice in leadership and, and in governance, the Prophet Sallallahu of course took us to um, Medina and, and when in Medina the, the, the mithaq was established there, it was it was groundbreaking, it was revolutionary because the Prophet Sallallahu utilized it as an, uh, a vehicle through which to bring about social cohesion in that society. And that social cohesion was also about protecting the rights of minorities in, in, in that society. So the Jewish tribes in Medina were a minority group. And through the Mithaq al-Medina, or the constitution, sometimes the English uh, translations thereof, um, uh, of Medina, which the Prophet ﷺ, of course, established upon his arrival there, was then to say that, no, if all of us are uh, here in Medina, uh, we are all here to, 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 to live together and, and we, we all need peace, we all need harmony, we all need uh, uh, you know, recognition for our human dignity, then what will govern us is justice. What will govern us is fairness and compassion in the way in which governance will be structured and set up in Medina. And that's what the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. And in that way, the, the rights of these minority groups were protected. We also know about the minorities of how women, for example, yeah. were treated in that society, especially in the early uh, f phases. Uh, f f female infanticide was, was a common thing. Uh, and so uh, it was a revolution when the Prophet Sallallahu came and held that society accountable mm -hmm. for the fact that they were burying their girl children alive. And these were minorities. And so those social justice issues which were what the Prophet ﷺ championed. And so today it's about gender-based violence. Yeah. And so, the, so today it's about uh, domestic violence and so forth. And so I think in this way, uh, and, uh, and Khadija, what's, what's of course happening in Palestine and what's happening in South Africa uh, is what we want to draw lessons about uh, from the teachings of our beloved Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are speaking to Sheikh Ihsan Talib who is sharing his insights on, uh, this, uh, on the topic of, around extracting lessons from the prophetic seerah for an intersectional approach to the genocide in Palestine and social justice in South Africa. So it's really about connecting historical lessons with modern and struggles um, uh, but, but of course with reference to the seerah of our prophet uh, um, peace and blessings be, be upon him and and so so Sheikh so important yes that we that we remember that it's not just about so for example when we think about the rituals that we perform so it's not just about the salah it's about what salah uh, represents and what we ought to take away from it and so of course when we speak d during this month in particular it's the month of Rabi al Awal and mm. when we speak about the, the, the example of the prophet or when we relate these beautiful, beautiful stories about him, that's not where it stops. Mm. As as she has so beautifully emphasized, yes, it's it's it ought to be about transformation. Yeah. It ought to be about everything that we do, uh, underpinned by these values of of um, of of justice, of compassion, of equality, of peace, mm. of humanity, and these are eternal values. Mm. They transcend time and space. Absolutely. These are universal values. They transcend, yeah, you know, whether it's geographical space, huge events with, within history. These are universal values. And, and the Prophet Sallallahu really, yes, as you yeah. mentioned, embodied these values because these are not abstract nouns. Mm. It mm. should not remain there in the realm of the abstract. So we don't speak about justice as a concept. We speak about justice in in terms of how we see it being manifested, right? And and as Sheikh so 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 of course accurately pointed us to so we we look around us. So mm. the justice in our homes. So so mm. justice is not something that's reserved for for public spaces. Yeah, it's in our it's as much in our private spaces as well. And then it emanates from there. Yeah. And if one starts thinking about it in that way, and all of these values, uh, if one starts thinking about it, then it, and, and everything that we do underpinned by this, and if we embody it in the way that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it becomes our default way of thinking. Right. When when one sees uh, when one sees an injustice, and 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 of course also if if one thinks about as as you mentioned, this is the last point that I, I, I want to make. Um, being nascent communities at the, that particular time, the idea of social cohesion, the idea of a type of solidarity, the idea of a collective, mm. um, and 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 the challenges that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had at the time. It's really exactly mm. what we can learn from because yeah. we are responsible for having created many of the boundaries and the barriers amongst ourselves, yeah. amongst yeah. human beings. Yeah. Um, as you mentioned, for example, we, we, we are divided along racial lines, along class lines, along gendered lines. Yeah. So it's up to us to dismantle these Absolutely. barriers as well. And represent.
And so, uh, I, I, and, and just to bring it back to to kind of you know just the reflection on the on the Palestinian question, uh, and and the South African realities and yeah. relevances and so forth. So, if one looks at how even in that nascent community, the Prophet Islam had to take like uh, radical steps to 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 almost in a sense secure yes. the, the 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 safety, secure the rights of that nascent community. Remember the displacement that took place um, way before the Hijra to Medina. They were forced to migrate to Abyssinia. Uh, can you even imagine what that must have been like? They live in the Arabian Peninsula in Mecca, mm-hmm. and the Prophet ﷺ sends them to a safe place. He was forced to, he was compelled to yeah. send them to a safe space in Abyssinia because there they will find the protection of a just king who was a non Muslim person, who was a Christian uh, king, a monarch. And so that displacement um, reflects itself today with with the displacement right now still in, in the Gaza, let alone yeah. since 1948 mm-hmm. and the Nakba. And, and, and so like you say, these are uh, uh, experiences uh, that are regrettably uh, visible and, and seen and, and, and gone through throughout the ages where tyrants and oppressors um, ply their trade. The Quran is uh, 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 filled with uh, impressions of, of the pharaohs of the time and how they tyrannized and oppressed. And so the displacement there can be reflected in the displacement here in Cape Town and in the rest of South Africa, the indigenous people who were yeah. removed forcibly we in from their lands. Month exactly we in heritage month, exactly a time for reflection. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about what we can, even in our own lifetime and our parents' lifetimes, recall about the displacement out of their homes, eviction, yeah. forcibly out of their homes, the forced removals, the Group Areas Act and all of this, and how that affected, and the intergenerational trauma and the, the, the violence that we're seeing today. The effects of the, the the effects that are representative in the violence in the gangsterism must still be related to that trauma that had been experienced, and we're talking about apartheid, which had been preceded by colonialism, and again all of these exploits, of course, by these powerful so-called um, you know blocks of of human beings is based on racism. The core of it is racism. And so how we as Muslims cannot be at the forefront of recognizing and then to fight um, with all our might against those abhorrent values, those abhorrent, um, you know, uh, 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 sort of representations of, of, of human beings um, is, is, beyond, is beyond belief and beyond understanding. And so to come back to the Prophet Sallallahu and then just before going in and, and making further parallels with, with, with the current situation, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, um, you know, emphasis that he, for example, brought, which was revolutionary to the context of women and how the rights of women had been restored at a time when women were regarded as material possessions. They didn't have identities. And at a time when, uh, you know, they, they would even be inherited from generation to generation, uh, which, is, which is sometimes mind-boggling and, and sometimes we can't even understand. And so the Prophet ﷺ and the Holy Quran, of course, elevated the status of women. And so these were minority groups. And so the social justice uh, uh, agenda of the Prophet ﷺ was revolutionary. Mm-hmm. Uh, for that time and in that particular society. And then the racial uh, discrimination, which the Prophet ﷺ abolished as well. I mean, that uh, the, the examples of, of, of Bilal uh, uh, bin Abi Rabah and so forth, and to elevate him to the status of the Prophet's own Mu'addin in, in, in the Haram of, of Medina, and to promote brotherhood, of course, amongst all of them. Um, was the ways in which the Prophet ﷺ built, like you said earlier, on that social cohesion uh, in society. And social cohesion, the Nabi ﷺ didn't confine that to the people who were the adherents of the Muslim mm-hmm. faith. Mm-hmm. He included every single citizen, if that terminology can be applied at that time. Every person who lived in Medina was included in that social cohesion project of the Nabi Muhammad ﷺ. The Jewish tribes thereafter, uh, d- deprive themselves of that uh, social uh, structure and construction of Medina when they commit treason against the state of Medina by siding with the enemies of the state in the form of the Quraysh at the time who were waging wars against Medina. But the protecting of the rights of non-Muslims and of prisoners of war was 
uh, 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 was was again revolutionary in the way in which the Prophet Sallallahu showed um, uh, its operationalization in Medina. And so what we also want to then do is to say, okay, so how do we further look at um, some of these realities of, of, of commonalities rather uh, in Khadija? And, and we've spoken about the displacement and the loss of the homeland. Mm how that uh, applied in Mecca, how that became a reality uh, for the people. They, 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 they were in their own homelands. They were boycotted even. Uh, the persecution, you know, uh, of the, the Prophet Sallallahu own community for three years that um, uh, the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was boycotted and, and, and with, his fa- with, with his family. Also the economic sanctions and the social boycotts. Um, what we're seeing, for example, in, in, in the Palestinian context is what the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had also undergone through in terms of these social boycotts. They were, uh, they were they, the, 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 the weapons that we used against them were, 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 were uh, boycotting the sources of, of, of water Boy- for them to be um, uh, sanctioned in terms of being deprived of food, being deprived of water. Uh, they could only stay within a certain um, a geographical space. They could not move beyond that. And the Prophet Sallallahu had to, of course, also navigate his space through there. Brings us to what's happening, of course, in, in the Gaza today and how that also uh, played out in, in the South African space. People were, um, the, 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 the group areas act, Act and 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 uh, you know the restriction of movement confined people to certain spaces. If they wanted to move beyond that, they had to get um, dome passes and 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 so forth. And and so all of those become uh, uh, the kind of contextual realities within which we 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 of course need to understand um, how how the the mission of Islam. Uh, intends for us to resolve or bring resolution, contribute towards resolutions uh, to the to the struggles of the Palestinians today. Uh, the suppression also of identity and rights. The Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the early Muslims had to suffer severe persecution precisely because they uh, chose to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, and we see also how um, the suppression of the, the national identity and the rights of the Palestinian people is at the core, really, of this of this struggle, uh, that they've not even been recognized as a people, that the, the real sort of objective that is being pursued here is to annihilate and to eliminate the national identity mm. of, of Palestinians. And then, of course, uh, with all of that becoming then also the further justification for the um, you know the the further um, possession or rather dispossession of the Palestinian people of their lands. So the physical persecution and the brutality, uh, but then also how the Prophet Sallallahu managed to uh, you know build a measure and a sense of resilience and steadfastness uh, in his own people among them. How the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed um, you know remarkable. Uh, ability to lead them towards resilience and sober and patience under those uh, circumstances. The Prophet Sallallahu of course, in the Meccan phase, uh, resorted to all these uh, ways and mechanisms of uh, non-violent resistance, non-violent, you know, standing up uh, against the oppression, mm-hmm. uh, using all forms of diplomacy and so forth. Uh, until the point, of course, and and the Holy Quran is is, is clear about that that the Prophet ﷺ was not allowed to pick up arms during that particular time, but until they were able to, in a sense, regroup and find consolidation of a sort of presence of a state, presence of a community and a society uh, like what happened in Medina, and thereafter, of course, also the resistance had to. Um, uh, be 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 escalated to 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 armed resistance against what was a, an existential threat, and this is of course what we see in the Palestinian case. Um, this is an existential threat that they have been subjected to. They haven't um, uh, 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 for long periods of time. The 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 response of the Palestinian people could not be in the way in which it is today, mm. and this has been escalated after almost a hundred years. If you take what happened before from an, uh, from 1917 with the Balfour Declaration and the support, of course, of the British um, uh, forces uh, under the so-called operation of the British Mandate to the Zionist uh, sort of project at the time and so forth. But up until today, of course, they were then forced as a people into a scenario. They prepared themselves to be able to also wage a armed struggle uh, against this existential threat. 
uh, we had a um, uh, something that, that 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 just dawned on me also when we were talking to this uh, scholar, Dr. Marwan Diab, and he was talking how you know in the media uh, when on 7th of October uh, some of the Israeli uh, 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 citizens were taken by Hamas at the time, uh, being referred to as hostages. Mm. And then the people who are actually abducted and imprisoned without trial and detained without any due process, they are referred to as prisoners. Mm -hmm. When in actual fact, this is a complete situation scenario of hostilities and war. So these are prisoners of war. And we've seen how even this example of the Prophet ﷺ, of the rights of prisoners of war, yes. how the Hamas prisoners of war had been demonstrated to have received the kind mm. of treatment of dignity and honor and respect by the testimony of the very prisoners compared to the brutal oppression and the brutal occupation of how prisoners are being um, treated and of course brutalized uh, in, 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 in prisons, etc. And so international solidarity and alliances is what the Prophet ﷺ also uh, embarked upon and uh, but more importantly also to establish always the moral the moral and the ethical foundations of that struggle yeah. this is what we have seen here in south africa we managed to find a global response uh, an international solidarity against apartheid because it was an ethical struggle we see that in the struggle of the palestinian people today by the grace of allah it has emerged to be recognized as an ethical struggle. It is a moral struggle that the people are, of course, um, struggling for. And uh, that is, those are the values of Islam. Those are the values of Islam in the sense um, that whatever uh, the purpose and whatever the cause is, it is underpinned uh, by ethics, it is underpinned by morality, and that is, compare that to the genocide. And do the do the do the comparison and the contrast uh, in that regard, and so and Khadija, I think for us from the South African uh, context perspective, also we 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 know that the parallels are absolutely um, relevant, and and um, accurately on 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 point in terms of the parallels that happened between what the Prophet have awesome. gone through, uh, what the Palestinian people uh, are going through, and what the South African uh, uh, society has gone through, but are still going through. Yes. I think it is imperative for us to understand that when we are uh, talking about this moral struggle, it's about recognizing and identifying the oppression and recognizing who are because all of these points of um, oppression and all of these players who bring this brutality and the genocide are the same people who are still perpetuating our struggle of inequality, of poverty, of unemployment, of uh, economic inequality. And, and, and the basis thereof is racism. They are the same players, the same global Zionist capitalist um, you know, a, 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 a project that is wreaking the genocide on the people in Palestine are the same people who are systematically um, perpetuating the suffering and the injustices, in fact, escalating the suffering and the injustices through the corruption through the systemic, um, you know, uh, uh, corruption within uh, government structures as well, that further perpetuate the 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 the, the manifestations of, of of murder in our society, uh, the gangsterism within our society, the ravaging effects of uh, unemployment and poverty in our society, uh, the ravaging effects and the impact that that has on the ability of people to pursue education so that they may be able to to get themselves out of those cycles of poverty and 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 languishing of course in those circumstances and so i think our uh, seer of our beloved nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the holy month of ramadan it is our obligation that we um that we understand that that, that the deen of islam <laughs> and the quran and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is 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 going to hold us accountable for the fact that he has given us this blueprint, he has given us this methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is relevant and applicable to all times and to all places. 
And here in South Africa, we have the challenges, like the people in Palestine have those challenges. Like we've also had them, especially during the times of, of apartheid, but they, as we said, we've, they continue. And so our challenge that we have to step up to is to then say, how do we continue to, to, to extract the guidance from the CIRA to bring practical and um, lived experience solutions uh, for society? I think, I think that is our struggle in Khadija, and I think we do far too little about yes. that. There's far too little um, exertion of, of effort and exertion of the mind and uh, challenging the status quo about what religion is and going against the narrative that religion can uh, somehow uh, uh, encourage us to be in our own little cocoons yeah. and just um, you know, perform ritual forms of devotion and worship uh, whilst the purpose and the cause why Allah Ta'ala had sent Islam is being neglected. I think, I think that for us is a, a perpetual challenge which, which, we have to, uh, which we have to step up to. Yeah. Sheikh, it feels like we can carry on for a long time. I think there were a lot of questions that were raised also that we need to unpack. And so when, 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 when Sheikh I mean, on that final point around um, uh, us questioning our morality, our own morality, and not through the narrow or framing our, our obligations in such a narrow way in as far as our morality is concerned. And also for me, a core question that I hope that we can maybe discuss on, an, on another occasion is whether we recognize, as Sheikh has said now, you know, these, we, these varied manifestations of injustices where we see it in the genocide in a very, very explicit way. Do we recognize it in our midst? Mm. Do we recognize it there? Or do we, and do we recognize the, the very insidious ways in which it mm. plays out? Mm. Do we fall prey to this me, myself and I narrative, mm. you know, and this particular discourse mm. and this particular project? Mm. So, shukran so much Allah for that. Allah bless you, Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.